Hello, I'm gonna show you my uh, video for the uh, competition organized by uh, Scale Modeling Wiki. That first, I really would like to thank for this uh, great opportunity. And uh, so, as we are supposed to uh, show uh, a technique of modeling, what I would like to do is to show how to do a uh, rusty object. So the idea is here, I've got this plate that is just some plastic card damaged with uh, some files and uh, and uh, drills. So we have some bullet impacts here and a uh, soldering uh, mark that I've done with just some uh, putty. So the idea is to go through all the steps to make it look like a rusty steel plate, something that would be used as a uh, shield or shelter for example. Uh, so the various steps are gonna be first we're gonna paint it uh, rust with rusty tones and then we're gonna paint the uh, original color of the plate. Uh, since it's been soldered there's gonna be two colors uh, using the air spray technique to get some uh, heavy chipping. Then we're gonna do some uh, smaller chips on the plate with the sponge technique. After that, paint the soldering mark and then go for washes, streaks, and finally pigments. Uh, so let's begin with the uh, rust painting. For that, I'm gonna use the airbrush and uh, some uh, acrylic colors, different rust tones. Uh, it's always very important to have uh, various tones, not to use only a single one. So I'm going to use three of them at the moment, a dark one, medium and light rust one. So uh, let's begin. Let's go for the first one, which is a dark rust tone with which I'm going to cover the whole plate. There it is, it's fully covered. Now I'm gonna use a more medium rust and lighter rust tone to create some variations. Now the uh, medium rust sprayed in a uh, random pattern. The idea is not to cover the full plate, just to create some uh, changes in the color. There it is, and now let's go for the uh, very light rust tone. So this is the light rust tone, and I'm gonna spray it especially on some uh, specific spot like uh, around the edges or close to the bullet holes, where the light rust would be uh, would be here the, the the new rust. So there it is, that is the uh, finished uh, rust on the plate. So now it's time for the uh, hairspray technique. So here uh, I've got some hairspray, really very regular hairspray uh, that I've uh, sprayed in that uh, small plastic canister. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the airbrush and we are gonna spray two layers on the plate uh, because I really want a heavy chipping on this one. So two layers is gonna be good. And uh, later on, once it's uh, painted with the water, we're going to be able to remove the aspray, which is going to show, uh, reveal the rust underneath. So let's go for it. So let's spray the plate with the aspray. There it is. That is for the first layer. I'm going to wait for it to be dry and then uh, go for the second one. Okay, second layer. 
So here we are now, we have two layers of hairspray on the plate. Uh, we're gonna wait uh, five to 10 minutes and then spray the actual paint on the plate. So later on we can do the heavy chipping. Okay, so it's been uh, around 10 minutes now. I've just covered half of the plate, the one that is uh, above the uh, soldering mark, because I want to make two different colors, because you know those plates have been soldered together, two different plates. Uh, I've prepared some uh, blue paint here in the airbrush, that's going to be the color of uh, this part. And for the upper part of the plate, I'm going to use something more uh, yellow, you know, to create some uh, contrast. This is visually interesting. So now I'm going to spray it. Uh, it's going to be a light spray because I really want to have a heavy chipped, uh, heavy rusty plate. So it's going to be a light spray of uh, blue coat. There it is. Well, obviously the lighter the coat, uh, the easier it is going to be to uh, to chip the, the hairspray that is underneath. So now I'm going to mask the blue part and we're going to paint uh, the uh, other part of the plate. Here we go, I've reverted the, uh, the tape, I loaded some uh, yellowish tone and let's go for the smaller part. Again, light coat, because I really want it to be chipped. So now let's go to, for the heavy chipping part, uh, removing the airspray. Uh, it's just been like uh, four or five minutes uh, since I sprayed the, the uh, yellow color. Uh, here's what I'm going to need. Uh, I've got some water. Uh, old stiff paintbrush. A needle. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to use the clean one. Well, there's no clean one. Well, a needle for the small uh, scratches. And, well, that should be uh, enough for this one. So let's go for it. Uh, put a bit of water on the paintbrush. Moist the area. Wait for the water to penetrate through the paint. And slowly, the airspray is going to react with the water and it's going to wipe away, creating the chips. So as you can see, the paint chips uh, really easily. That's because there's a lot of fair spray and not a lot of paint here. Uh, and then it's really a matter of taste. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep uh, removing the airspray with the uh, brush. And then later on, uh, we'll do smaller chips with the needles. Okay, I'm done with the brush. Uh, I've made it a bit slightly lighter on the yellow side to make the difference between uh, the two parts. And now uh, I'll use a needle for very fine, very small scratches. It's still wet, so the airspray will come off easily. There it is. So as I've mentioned, it's going to be a really, really used, uh, heavily used uh, plate. Um, well, as you can see, I've tried to remain a bit logic, uh, removing especially the paints around bullet holes, uh, damages and scratches on the plates. Uh, so, so far we haven't done anything regarding the, uh, 
the, the soldering mark that we'll treat later. And now it's time for smaller chips to, with the uh, sponge technique. Okay, so time for the smaller chips now um, to, make, to make it look more uh, real and logical. Um, do we, I'll do that with the sponge technique. So this is uh, some, uh, some foam that I collect from the uh, Edward uh, kits. Three colors, uh, chocolate, chipping color. Yeah, those are acrylics. Medium rust and light rust. I'm gonna start with the darker one and then to the lighter, uh, doing less and less. So a bit of paint on the uh, sponge. I remove it on some uh, tissue. And then Well, almost all the paint is gone on the foam. I gently tap where I want to have the chips. Okay, I'll leave it like this to the blue part because I really want to make a difference between the yellow and the blue one. So now let's go for the medium rust. And this time I'm gonna focus on the uh, edges, uh, really rust, places where the rust is really located. So the edges uh, around the bullet holes, basically around the damages. Okay, let's call it done. And now the very light rust tone. And I'm gonna do this even lighter than the previous one. Again, around uh, corners, edges, damages. Where are the places where you will have the uh, fresher rust. So there it is. Uh, it looks a bit uh, violent at the moment, but later on with the washes, uh, everything is going to be more blurred and uh, make a bit more sense. Uh, but before that, we are going to have now to paint the uh, ironing uh, mark between uh, the two plates. And I'm going to do that first with uh, airbrush and then with the paintbrush. So <clears throat> regarding the soldering mark, uh, I'm going to start with the uh, airbrush. First, a uh, dusty color uh, that I'm gonna spray all along the soldering mark. And then a uh, very dark one, brown, blackish, uh, more focused on the uh, inner of the, uh, of the soldering, uh, soldering mark. Uh, the idea is to depict the effect of heat during the soldering process. There it is, and now I'm gonna go for the uh, dark, uh, dark color uh, mix between brown and black, uh, closer to the mark itself, showing the uh, the high temperature. So here's the color. It's a mix of uh, black uh, rubber and uh, red brown, and this one I'm gonna spray very close to uh, the soldering mark. There it is. Uh, I'll call that done for the uh, airbrush. And now with the paintbrush, we're gonna paint with the uh, silver, uh, the uh, ironing itself. So here's a silver color paintbrush. 
and we'll just paint the ironing mark, the soldering mark, sorry. There it is. So I'm not trying to be very accurate here because, I mean, in the real life, this uh, soldering done on the battlefield, you know, uh, wouldn't be done with an extreme precision. And uh, now we're going to go for a uh, varnish uh, glass, uh, glossy coat um, and go for the washes. And those washes, on top of uh, improving and increasing the rusty appearance, uh, we're going to be able to blur a bit uh, this, this area between the colors on the soldering mark. So next is uh, going to be for the washes. So what I've done in the meantime is I've put a uh, glossy varnish coat that is now fully dry. So you can see the, the surface is, uh, is glossy. Uh, first I'm going to apply a general wash to fill in the, the dents, the gaps, the damages, the bullet holes. And then after that uh, the uh, rust uh, wash. So the first one is a, uh, an NML uh, product. Uh, color is somewhere between uh, brown and reddish brown. It's uh, pretty diluted and I'm gonna apply it on almost the whole surface. The idea here is to go in the details, fill them, but it holds scratches to make them more visible. There it is. I'm gonna wait for a few minutes for it to be just dry to the touch and then we'll wipe it. So it's been a few minutes now. It's uh, well, it looks dry and uh, now I'm gonna wipe the wash with uh, this tissue that's, uh, that's actually for glasses. Randomly. Here we go. And now time for the rust wash. Uh, I'm gonna use two of them. Um, I've just made them from oil paints. This one is a light rust tone. This one is uh, oxide patina. So, well, basically uh, one very light rust and one light rust. Uh, I'm gonna start with the darker one and use it on patches where I want to increase the uh, rust uh, tone. So basically where there is some chipping, not on the uh, soldering place because the rust can't happen over there. Here with patches, small dots. Uh, that's also going to help to blend uh, the, sh the sharp contrast between uh, paint and rust. Okay, now I'll wait for it to dry a bit, five minutes, and then we'll blend it. So here we go again. Uh, it's been uh, three, four minutes. And now it's uh, it's dry from what I can see. And uh, now I'm gonna blend those dots with a uh, stiff brush. Okay, and if it's not enough, we can just add some more. And there it is. Now let's do the same with the very light uh, rust stone. So that's pretty much the same. Uh, the difference is that this time I'm gonna focus on the very damaged areas. Here we go. I'm gonna wait for four or five minutes and then blend it.
so there it is that's pretty subtle um but uh for me that's fine enough uh, it blurred some uh, some rough contrast and it uh, it shows a general rusty appearance so what i'm gonna do now uh, on the side is put a uh, matte varnish coat and once it's dry then we can go for more streaking which i'll do with uh, pencils and finally with uh, the pigments so let's uh, move on now with the streaking. Uh, for that, I'm gonna use the weathering pencils. Again, different rusty tones, uh, dark one, medium rust, and light rust. Uh, but just before going for the streaks, I just would like to add some uh, kind of filters with those uh, pencils. I'm gonna use the uh, medium rust for that. It's pretty easy to use. And uh, just, uh, I'm just gonna apply it with a bit of water. Uh, yeah, forgot to mention, I uh, added in the meantime a flat coat of varnish that is now fully dry. So I'm gonna add a bit of uh, pencil here. And then <coughs> with just, uh, just some water, I'm gonna blend it with just water. Very easy to use. And it creates some nice effects. Okay, done. So now let's go with the streaking, streaking itself. I'm gonna start with the dark rust. So the idea is uh, well, this plate is going to be positioned uh, well, uh, like this, with this part up and this one down, so it's going downward like this. So I'm going to do the streaking in that direction. And... Well, it doesn't really matter if they don't look like anything accurate in the beginning, because anyway, we are going to... Uh, blend them and make them uh, longer and nicer with a paintbrush. There it is. And now with a brush slightly moist with water, I'm gonna extend those. So there it is, uh, with the streaking uh, completed. Well, then it's it's only a matter of taste. I mean, uh, depends uh, if you want them more uh, heavily done or whatsoever. I mean, uh, if it's not enough, you can just add some more uh, pencils. And if it's too much, just go with the brush, water, and remove it. So uh, it's close to being finished. Now just a bit of pigments, and that's gonna be done. So back with the pigments, again, different tones, uh, too rusty, a dark one, a light one. Uh, um, the, the interest of using the pigments in that case is they're going to make a difference in texture. They're going to be uh, really, really matte, really opaque. Uh, so that's going to create an interesting uh, contrast on the plate. Uh, well, I don't want to use them heavily, so it's going to be pretty light. First with the dark ones, I'm going to apply them dry with stiff brush and on just some spots um, like corner here, for example, or perhaps maybe around damages here, this bullet hole. It's barely visible because I don't want to, I really don't want to overdo this one. 
it's just to create a bit of texture. And then the light pigment, well, the light rust pigment. There it is. So that's the end of it. Uh, now this uh, rusty steel plate is finished. Uh, so to summarize for the steps, first it, it's been a uh, rust uh, rust paint, then the hairspray, the actual uh, color of the plate, the initial color, uh, then with water uh, removing a bit of the hairspray to get the heavy chipping, then smaller chips with the sponge. We can use a paintbrush as well. Uh, then after that, uh, I've painted the uh, soldering mark and uh, a bit of uh, glossy varnish, washes, matte varnish, streakings with uh, pencils, and finally a bit of pigments. And that's the end of it. So, uh, well, the idea for me was uh, to use it on a diorama with a, on a tramway on 135 scale. It's going to be covering here this uh, this window, you know, as something that's been placed here to, to protect the, the, the soldiers fighting from inside. Um, so I can call it done. Uh, I hope you liked it. I again really want to uh, thank uh, uh, Skill uh, Modeling uh, Wiki for giving us the uh, opportunity to participate in that uh, competition and really hope you enjoyed it.